Okay, in this video, we'll show you as an MBDyne user why you would want to learn about Blender and MBDyne. Very quickly, we will build a uh, crank and slider. Uh, we will build a pendulum, double pendulum. Uh, we will interact with this in uh, some very unique ways. So let's get started very quickly. It'll only take a few minutes. Uh, we'll start with uh, creating a ground. And there's other videos that go a lot slower than this that show you how to do these things. I just want to show you how quickly these things can be done. Um, so what we're doing is we're creating a axial rotation with a sign drive that will uh, ramp this up from zero to one over a half cycle and that way we can get our uh, crank moving. Right. So uh, there we are. We now will move this uh, crank uh, down in the Z direction uh, by one unit and we need to rotate it about its x-axis so that it will rotate uh, in the proper plane and we will call these things their appropriate names. We will call this a crank and this is important in that the input file will show all these names uh, and this will be the ground. Now once we have these two uh, we will, this is our only node, um, well actually these two, and we will do a, uh, a displacement off of that which we call a rigid offset. And this rigid offset will uh, be our arm. So we'll call this the arm and we'll move it in the x direction one. Right, so now we have an arm off of this crank and um, we can build a simulation here. Um, we'll save it. Uh, at the end I'll have this file available for you to see. Um, and we can run and we see our simulation runs. But it's not uh, animating. Let's animate that. So we'll um, select, uh, toggle all of the selections off so we can put on a stream animation output. And we will now stream what we're simulating. And there we go. There's our crank, right? So now let's make our um, slider. Uh, we'll first do this with a distance joint. Uh, this is a minimal setup and uh, then we'll add some more complexity rather quickly. So we'll put a distance joint in uh, here um, and there we are, there's our distance. We will call that now our slider and we will locate that uh, in the uh, uh, x equals 4 direction but we'll put it up on the ground because uh, oops, let's see you right here because what we want then to do is um, take this, give it a mass that's required. We need the mass to, uh, to be able to run the simulation. So we'll create a, uh, an inertial matrix. Now we have our mass. Uh, we'll have it slide along the ground with a uh, in plane joint. Um, and there we go. So now we're ready to simulate this. Watch it. There we go, right? So it's uh, there, it's simulating. In 10 seconds, off we go. All right, so now uh, let's add a bit of complexity because right now we only have this one mass. Everything else is uh, kinematic. Um, so let's go to uh, these elements and start uh, building them up a bit. Um, so we can do our ac take our axial rotation, remove it, right? And uh, we'll, we'll now make that instead a uh, joint, we'll call this a, um, this will be a revolute hinge, right? And then we'll also put a, uh, a moment around that. We'll do a, a couple, right? A joint, a, uh, let's see here, we already have the joint. We need the couple, um, and it'll be an internal couple between those two uh, nodes. And um, we'll make it, you know, it could be a follower force, and we need to give it a, a drive. This will be a template drive uh, only in the uh, Z direction. We'll take our sign drive, so there we go. And uh, then finally we need to give this mass because um, we're adding a, 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 a moment to it. So let's give that a body mass, all right, the same. And now when we run this, we should, uh, right, there we go. So we've got, now that's spinning up because we're adding torque, right? Very nice, all right. But Again, our, our arm here has no mass to it, so let's take care of that. Um, we'll go and take our uh, rigid offset, 
Um, and because right now we only have this node, that node, and that node. This is just a rigid offset with a distance joint. So if we um, take our, um, let's go back up here, find our offset, get rid of it, right? And now uh, we'll still go to these two, and we'll turn that in also to a uh, revolute hinge, right? So uh, joint, uh, no, no, yeah, revolute hinge, right? So here we go. Now we need to rotate that. So it, we'll rotate it 90 degrees. Oops. Uh, uh, let's see here. Let's try this one more time. Rotate about the x-axis 90 degrees. There we go. So, uh, and then we need to give that mass too, right? So we'll give it a body. And now we're ready to uh, simulate all of this, right? So everything has a mass. Everything's going. Right, so that's kind of interesting. Now, um, the next thing we might think of doing, uh, I'm going to very quickly turn this into a double pendulum, right? And that's easy enough to do by just taking uh, this, um, what is it, our in-plane joint, right? This in-plane joint, we'll get rid of it, right? And then we create our simulation, run our simulation, and ah. Well, that is kind of a double pendulum, but we have no gravity. So let's add some gravity. Um, so we'll do add um, and environment gravity, right? We'll give it a, it's a, we need a new drive for this. It'll be a template drive. And of course, what we want to do here is have it be a constant drive of a value of uh, 9.81 meters per second and uh, per second and there we go um, so now we have gravity um, I believe we should yeah we should be good to go now uh, oh <laughs> right our gravity we put it in the wrong uh, I didn't give it a negative so let's go edit that um, it's okay because I mean this shows you how quickly you can go in and make changes here and also how you can quickly see when changes are needed right so here we are, we're uh, at negative. Now everything should work fine, right? So we'll run this and there we go. All right, so that's cool, right? So we've got our pendulum. We're, it's, it's driven, right, by that uh, moment that we, we gave to it. Um, and um, now the uh, uh, next thing that we'll do is uh, just want to show, for instance, how to add two more things. One is uh, to take our distance joint which is here and drive it um, so we'll add make that driven so that it's uh, only in effect let's make give it a new drive only in effect for um, let's say the first five seconds time is less than 5.0 right so now what's kind of interesting is we'll see this um, Give you a little room here to look at this. We'll run the simulation, and after there, <laughs> it breaks off. Okay, so last thing I want to show um, before I get to the very last is how to drive this through the keyboard with the event drivers, so we can uh, uh, increase the the uh, the torque on the motor, so to speak. Um, so first, we'll go down to this driven and get rid of that because we want to do that. We want to go and put our clamp back in here. I mean, our, uh, our um, what is this? This joint is the uh, in-plane joint, right? And then uh, let's just make sure that all works properly, right? It should, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, we've got gravity, right? So that's the problem, right? Because we have gravity, we need to give it more torque. So how are we going to give it more torque? Well, I'm going to do it through the keyboard. I'm going to drive it uh, myself. So I'm going to go up to, uh, where is it, my... Um, my internal couple right here and uh, I'm also by the way planning to make a mistake so you can see how we can uh, debug as well so we're going to our internal couple right now the drive is a template drive and um, so we want to edit that template drive so that instead of be using the sign we'll use something new we're going to create an event drive with page up and page down on the keyboard giving, uh, oop, let's see here, we'll do it, right? So we're going to create a new, here we go, event drive, and, uh, right, page up and page down. I need to create an event stream, 
So there's our event stream, event drive, and uh, off we go. All right, so now, um, next thing, I'm going to run this forever, right? Because right now I've been doing it 10 seconds. We'll go forever like that. And uh, now when we run it, right, it's running. Um, oh, now that's the debugging part. So let's look at what our message was. Our message is that there was a drive caller not defined on line 128, right? So if we uh, go to line 120, let's see here, right, where would it be? It would be here. There we go. So if we go to line 128, well, as an example, this, is, this was all automatically created, by the way. This is what's happening in the background. So we go to line 128, and we see on 128, where is it? Right, you'll see that what we have is we have on line 128, we have a drive. I know this because I, we have a drive here. One, okay, here, where's our event drive? Right here, we have an event drive for this drive caller, but the event drive is further down in the, st in the stack. So we just need to move that up. So let's go over here. Right, we'll go back. Uh, let's get this out of the way. And we'll go look at our drives, and we see that our event drive is at the bottom. Let's move our event drive. I'm going to wrap it around. Now it goes to the top, right? So we should be good now, right? So we can run this. All right, good. So it's running. We need to give uh, some torque. Look at that, all right? Off it goes. Now I hit escape and the whole simulation stops. I can hit uh, run, do it again. And now I'm going to hit escape. Now everything that we just simulated we've captured and we can now uh, analyze it much more carefully. So I'm going to import all of my keyframes of the motion. Right? And uh, now that we have that, we can animate this and we can see what happened. Uh, we added torque and off it went. Right. So then the other thing we might be interested in is, for instance, what's the motion? And we can plot that very easily. Just come over here, plot the node. And let's say we want to plot its X and Z positions because we're, um, and there we go. There's the movement in the X and Z positions. And now let's say that we want to go to one of our uh, joints. Um, let's say this revolute hinge here. Uh, why not that? And we'll plot that. We say we want to uh, plot the output. And we have, let's say we want to plot the uh, the forces in the uh, X and Z direction on that revolute hinge, right? And there we go, right? So um, that is uh, uh, a quick overview. And uh, then just so you see it here, oh, wait a minute, here, uh, the last simulation we just ran, um, this is what it all looks like. That's the, uh, the MP9 input file, and I, uh, I'll post that up on the MP9 users list so you have that as well. Okay, um, that's all for now. Thank you.